The archaeological site of Mitla in Mexico is famous for its intricate stonework and megalithic architecture. Stone blocks weighing up to 50 tons were used in the buildings of Mitla. For a long time, the source of these giant stones remained a mystery. In 1992, a survey of the mountains around Mitla revealed nearly a dozen potential ancient quarries. This contained some enormous stone blocks in different stages of quarrying, including what could be the largest carved stone block in the entire American continent. At over 12 meters long by 4 meters wide and 3 meters thick, this huge monolith has an estimated weight of over 350 tons. Rumor has it that even larger stones may be found in the mountains northeast of Mitla. There, satellite pictures show what appears to be an extensive ancient quarry, containing several stones over 10 and up to 15 meters long. The area is of very difficult access, but we felt we had to go and explore this site. Here is what we found. Hello everyone, this is uh, Marco Vigato of the Arcs Project. We are here with uh, our friend uh, Misael, who's gonna lead us uh, on a mountain here, just uh, behind uh, the town of Mitla, looking for a mythical lintel, a huge uh, megalithic stone block, which is estimated to weigh uh, over 350 tons. So one of the largest, if not the largest, quarried block uh, in all the American continent. Uh, uh, 12 meters long, 4 meters wide, and 4 meters tall. So we'll be trying to locate it uh, in uh, these uh, mountains uh, right uh, behind me, and hopefully we'll be lucky. So let's go. We're right behind uh, the Mitla Fortress, which is uh, that hill down there. You can see some of the walls and the structures on top. Uh, and uh, everywhere around here, we're right above uh, the town of Mitla. It's uh, full of these uh, huge uh, stone boulders uh, that were probably the result of an ancient uh, avalanche. Some really impressive cliffs uh, up there. Crossing a dry stream here is a really beautiful landscape. It's very barren, very rocky. There's also a lot of cacti and other vegetation. along this uh, pretty steep uh, ascent here. This is again the fortress of Mitla. Down there is uh, where we left the car. <laughs> Uh, the summit and the quarry site. We're starting to see a little bit uh, more vegetation, particularly in those canyons here. You can see now right behind us there's some uh, pretty large uh, stones. Uh, we don't know yet uh, if these are natural stones or are part of an ancient quarry, but we'll keep going. Uh, and uh, get closer to see if uh, this is uh, indeed uh, the lintel we're looking for. I'm 
pierdo, ya busco el mapa, ¿dónde está la vereda? Así como ahí arriba me, me paré tantito, quiere que estaba la vereda. Well, we're getting here to the edge of what looks like a very deep uh, canyon and uh, allegedly the giant lintel is located uh, along one of the sides of this uh, canyon which would have also very provided a way of uh, transporting it downhill. Now keep walking uh, along uh, the edge of uh, the canyon looking at the map there is an area here with lots of uh, large uh, stone blocks uh, down the bottom of this uh, canyon you can see that somebody clearly lives or works there there's a little patch of uh, cultivated land. Still don't know if these stones are natural or artificial. This looks like uh, what could be a potential path or a descending uh, causeway here from which uh, the huge megalithic stone blocks would have been dragged down to the bottom of the valley. Now the vegetation becomes very thick. It's a uh, hard to proceed uh, and also to see anything we should we should be hopefully getting closer to the site uh, of uh, the quarry and the huge uh, lintel taking a little break before reaching uh, our destination we're not actually far we're probably only a couple hundred uh, meters away, just above uh, this uh, hill, and uh, we'll get uh, to the quarry. We've now reached a big uh, rock outgroup. Uh, that's uh, probably where the huge uh, stone blocks would have uh, been detached uh, and uh, the giant lintel is just a uh, few dozen meters away we're very high up uh, here just look at the Mitla fortress down there that's the town of Mitla so probably around uh, two or three hundred meters uh, above uh, the valley floor. There is a very big rock uh, down there. It's uh, quite curious because uh, these are uh, huge uh, rock boulders here are clearly somehow detached uh, from uh, the mountain. That could be a pretty good uh, slope uh, to take them down along this uh, valley, this canyon, down to the town of Mitla. So something interesting here that uh, Misael was pointing out there are many fragments of uh, ceramic. You want to show me, Misael? You can see here, so this area was clearly occupied, or at least visited, by humans in, uh, in ancient times. So, so again, that supports the idea these uh, may have been uh, a quarry. There is uh, what appears to be a large uh, stone wall made uh, of uh, some pretty large boulders here and uh, a stone stairway again on the way up uh, to the quarry so let's go on we see here in this uh, unusually green patch uh, there is probably a stream or a uh, water source nearby there are more walls or terraces uh, they could be pre-hispanic uh, here at the edge of the quarry so here is the reason of so much uh, greenery is a little water pond uh, here and very unusual in this kind of rocky and uh, desert terrain. It's a little abandoned house. It looks uh, modern. It's actually very close uh, to the quarry site. 
where the huge uh, stone blocks are located. You'll see some pretty large uh, stones uh, up there on the mountain. So we'll try to get there, or otherwise we'll just try to fly my drone to see what we can catch of the stones. We now got to these uh, really massive uh, boulder here. Very too big to be to be artificial. That's most likely just a natural rock uh, that maybe was uh, rolled over down here. There's some other uh, very large uh, stones here. This one looks almost rectangular, but it's hard to tell. So much vegetation, and to try to get uh, further up there seems to be an even larger stone. So this is what appears to be the largest one. It's no easy way to get uh, closer just because of the vegetation, but you see there is a, another boulder down there, and right uh, underneath our feet uh, there is this other huge stone with what appears to be a linear cut there, as if they had tried to split the stone. So. Again, more hints uh, that uh, this could uh, truly have been a pre-Hispanic uh, quarry. Since it's impossible to get there, we're going to try to fly a drone and uh, let's see what uh, the what the drone will see. can see we merely lost a drone. Luckily we managed to recover it. For whatever reason we lost signal. So we're trying to get some video of uh, the big stones uh, up here. So I think that's the end of uh, our adventure. We'll see on the way down if uh, we find uh, any more of the stone blocks that try to reach a very large stone that we saw at the bottom of the valley. Uh, and hopefully find more signs that these are actually worked and uh, quarried stones and not just uh, some uh, natural boulders. So we are on our way back and trying to get a little bit closer to that one which appears to be the largest stone at the quarry. Hopefully we'll be able to get uh, nearby and get a sense uh, if there is any cut or any sign of quarrying trying to get a little bit closer, but that's pretty much as far as we can get. And uh, I must say this only looks like uh, just a big uh, rock, uh, definitely no sign of uh, human workmanship. We're now on our way back uh, up there with the huge stone. Uh, and uh, I'm increasingly convinced that even though this may have been uh, a quarry, most likely some of these uh, very large uh, boulders are entirely natural. They probably came down uh, during some earthquake or landslide uh, from uh, from the mountain. Uh, although the possibility still exists uh, that uh, they were at least artificially modified uh, and probably meant to be used as lintels in some construction. So we're back from uh, our adventure. Fortunately, we didn't find uh, the lintel we were looking for. That looked more like uh, just a big uh, rock. Uh, but uh, we'll be going now to another quarry that uh, Misael here knows about. Uh, 
that is uh, located uh, just a few kilometers away, where there are apparently some other very large lintels, uh, probably around 8 meters long. So let's get back on the way and uh, let's go and see this other quarry. We now reached uh, the site of another pre-Hispanic quarry. We're going to see here close to the village of uh, Saga. the megalithic uh, lintel. It's probably five uh, meters long. You can see how it's worked uh, on this side. You actually see lots of parallel with uh, the other quarry where you have lots of uh, really large uh, boulders. Uh, they were probably, they probably fell down from uh, the cliff. Uh, and then they were carved here uh, in situ and carried down to the stream so they would be transported to Mitla. So here we found uh, our lintel. It's probably not uh, the largest, it's at least uh, five, maybe even six meters long, uh, probably weighing uh, around uh, 20 tons. So I would say this gives you a pretty good example of what a pre-Hispanic quarry here in the area of Mitla would look like. They would extract uh, these massive uh, stone blocks, uh, and then drag them down probably along a dry riverbed to the archaeological site uh, to be used as lintels uh, for their palace. Just as in the other quarry, there are plenty of very large uh, boulders uh, that you uh, have a prey car. Uh, so it's not entirely unlikely that what we saw in the other quarry back up on the mountain uh, could have been meant to be shaped uh, as a colossal lintel. So it's probably still in the very early stage of quarry. So we're heading back uh, to the site of Mitla, happy to have found uh, at least uh, one new megalithic lintel still in its quarry. Thank you. 